Groovy. Welcome to Slack to the Past. Today's episode, Samurai Jack. Samurai Jack is that one cartoon no matter what age I'm at, I've always been able to rewatch and appreciate it more than I had previously. The story always being something I felt more than happy to return to. And in case you're not familiar, long ago in a distant land, Aku, the shape-shifting master of darkness, unleashed an unspeakable evil but a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose him. Before the final blow was struck, he tore open a portal in time and flung him into the future, where his evil is law. Now the fool seeks to return to the past and undo the future that is Aku. And that's really it. The beauty of the show is in its simplicity. Whether it be in its plot, art style, or action, this is simply a badass show about a samurai in the future, and it never overcomplicates things. All of this can be credited to the Mac Daddy of cartoons himself, Gendy Tartakovsky! Not ringing any bells? You might not know his name, but you definitely know his work. Producing things such as Dexter's Laboratory, Powerpuff Girls, and the 2D animated Clone Wars series, this man basically molded my childhood. So pretty much you have this guy to thank for... for whatever this is. <laughs> Born in Moscow, Tartakovsky's family moved to the States in 1977, where he fell in love with American culture and comics. By the year 2000, he was an established creator at Cartoon Network, hot off the success of creating Dexter's Laboratory, a personal favorite of mine. At the time, he and his team were a bit fed up with the state of action cartoons. Gendy believed they focused way too heavily on dialogue and not enough on the action. He was then hard at work on a new project inspired by his favorite films, including Seven Samurai, Lawrence of Arabia, and Dr. Zhivago, which all totally scream Cartoon Network action series, right? Nope. Once he had something to pitch, he called his good buddy and Cartoon Network exec, Mike Lazo. It went something like this. <phone rings> hey, remember that show Kung Fu with David Carradine? Wasn't that cool? Yeah, it totally was! And thus, history was made! On August 10th, 2001, Samurai Jack debuted on Cartoon Network as a three-part special known simply as The Beginning. Receiving praise from critics and fans alike, this animated powerhouse ran until 2004 with four seasons and a total of 52 episodes. What set this show aside from all other cartoons at the time were all of the things Gendy Tartakovsky set out to achieve. Though being a series with a continuing storyline, each and every episode was more diverse than the last. There's the episode where Jack lives in a 40s crime noir. There's the episode where he fights with himself. Literally. The episode where he goes to space. He also once helped sea monkeys that sounded like Alec Guinness, Ringo Starr, and Sean Connery. There's of course the time he fought a guy straight out of a black exploitation flick. Oh yeah, and the time he was turned into a chicken. Though there was a wide variety of episodes, it always felt grounded and set in the universe that the show establishes so well in that intro. The amazing thing about having an animated series with this kind of diversity is the fact that it's an artist's playground. Every episode features drastically different settings, characters, actions, and they even create a new score for every episode. Very rarely do you see this much effort put into a series, and very rarely does an enemy or character model return in the series, which means every episode the artists have to start from scratch, and the amazing thing is they always create really cool things. Really, the only reoccurring things in the show are the bug bots, which are awesome and don't really happen that often, and fan favorite, the Scotsman. Which, I mean, come on, he's the best. And also voiced by the great John DiMaggio, you know, Jake. Bender, Marcus, John DiMaggio. By the look on your face, I can tell you like the pipes, we laddie. Speaking of voices, the humble voice Jack is played by Phil Lamar, another name that you might not remember, but you've definitely seen his work. And now it's time to play What Has Samurai Jack Been In? Marvin, Pulp Fiction. Vamp, Metal Gear Solid 2. Static, Static Shock. Remember that show? Green Lantern, Justice League. Osmosis Jones, Ozzy and Drix, yeah, Osmosis Jones had a show. Dracula, Billy and Mandy, Wilt, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, 
and my personal favorite, Bulby from Jimmy Neutron. His performance with Jack is simple yet noble. It's a fairly easy job because Jack doesn't speak a whole lot. Thank you. And as the shape-shifting master of darkness, the late, great Mako played the dastardly Aku. Who dares to summon the master of masters? You know he's cool because he only has one name. You know, like Bono, Cher, Seal. Also, fun fact that you probably already knew, Aku literally means evil. Which is fitting, because Aku, Aku's a bit of a dick. No, master. Please forgive me. No. The performances and writing made these characters shine, but what made them come to life was the art behind them. One cool thing that I didn't notice until recently, none of the characters have outlines. Like seriously, look at this. Everything about this show stands out and every single frame was painstakingly hand-drawn with hand-painted backgrounds. This art style is showcased so well with the way things are paced out. It was a ballsy move on Cartoon Network to greenlight a show with this kind of pacing. Samurai Jack was never afraid to take its time with telling a story. There are very often long stretches of no dialogue or action, just Jack journeying through the beautiful landscape Gendy and his team have created. You never really see a cartoon take a moment to let the audience appreciate the art the animators put so much time into. With most cartoons, something is constantly happening. It truly proves that there is more than one way to tell a story. Characters don't have to just spout exposition at each other. It can be told in moments, in glances, in actions. It's very refreshing to see an animated series that can have beautiful slow moments and minutes later have the coolest action scenes. In many ways, the pacing reminds me of a Quentin Tarantino flick. It takes time to appreciate what you're watching, but with the blink of an eye, it can transition into a badass action flick. Where Tarantino has long bouts of dialogue and then action, Samurai Jack has long bouts of silent art and then action. Speaking of action, this is probably one of the best choreographed animated shows of all time. Some of these battle scenes are better directed, better choreographed, and better paced than most Hollywood films. These tussles get rough and they never get boring, which can be attributed to the humanizing of Jack. He can get hurt, he can be knocked down, cut, and beat up. Depending on the foe, there is the possibility that Jack could lose a battle. This gives the audience something to root for instead of making him some kind of invincible badass. More action heroes should be humanized like this. For example, why does the original Die Hard work, but not the latest installments? Well, at first John McClane was just a normal dude in a tense situation. He wasn't perfect, he got hurt we felt as though he could potentially be killed. We felt for his plight because he was in a struggle. Now he rides fighter jets bareback. The same can be applied to Jack. Each battle is taxing on the warrior. It never comes off as an easy thing. You know an enemy is formidable for Jack when his hair starts coming out. That's when the samurai shit gets real. With Samurai Jack being well over a decade old, one has to ask, does it hold up? Well, yeah. In preparation for this video, I rewatched the series and discovered something very odd that I almost never find with something I feel such nostalgia for. I actually enjoyed this show now, more than seven-year-old me. I've now watched the entire series twice in the last few months, and I'm currently in the middle of my third run, kind of picking and choosing episodes as I go. There are so many elements that a child just wouldn't be able to appreciate. Now that I'm older and have learned more about the art, I can appreciate what this team has culminated to create the perfect show. In a time when many things were going digital, this team stood their ground with doing everything by hand. And with the amount of choreography for the fights and flat out uniqueness of its style, nuts. Absolutely nuts. Also, growing up as a bit of a film snob and comic fan, I've picked up on the countless references and inspirations that a seven-year-old would have had no way of noticing. Who knew I saw a glimpse of Seven Samurai a decade before I saw Seven Samurai? It's especially cool to check out the callbacks to Sergio Leone with the intense close-ups. Another aspect borrowed from Leone is the fact that the protagonist has an unknown name, much like Clint Eastwood's Man With No Name in the Dollars trilogy. Oh yeah, Jack isn't his real name. It's a nickname given to him by these dudes. Go, 
Jack, that was some awesome show. I never peer to pump moves like that, Jack. What? Jack was a ricochet against of a deli. His real name has never been spoken in the series. There's also the Matrix reference, Thunderdome, Ninja Turtles, countless Star Wars references, everything from Lawrence of Arabia to Blade Runner, which was in the chicken episode. Samurai Jack being a crazy artistic melting pot full of things that would seem like they would never work has been one of the most creative and innovative shows to hit the network of cartoons. At times it can be silly and conjure genuine laughs. At other times it can be heartbreaking. There was an episode or two that may or may not have brought a manly tear to my eye. Though it has cleverly funny moments and intense action scenes seamlessly woven throughout, Samurai Jack could almost be considered a tragedy. For four straight seasons, this man is trying to return home and save his loved ones. But the show must go on, right? So every episode, when it seems like his goal is going to be achieved, it's taken from him. A brilliant aspect of the show is how it shows the gradual toll that is taken on Jack. In some of the later episodes, he seems much more hardened and somber about his predicament. We can feel the hero's helplessness giving us more incentive to return next episode to see if maybe he can finally achieve happiness. I think the most tragic thing in the four seasons we've been blessed with is the fact that we never get to see Jack go home. In the 16 years of the show's existence, Samurai Jack is never given an ending. Until now. After years of a Samurai Jack film being in production hell, Gendy Tartakovsky had an epiphany whilst on the toilet. He called up Cartoon Network with his idea, and on December 2nd, 2015, it was announced that Samurai Jack would be returning on Adult Swim for a 10-part miniseries to finally conclude the Warriors' story. The entire team behind the original series is returning to see their traveler conclude his story. It's relieving to know this is all by the creator's will to make this happen, and not a studio wanting to cash in on member berries. I can't! Can't what? Can't even what? Oh, like she literally can't even. It's time to stop! The fact that it'll be on Adult Swim is another great sign. With this series, they'll be able to write the story as dark as they want and set up the action to be as violent as they want. Personally, I'm excited for a darker, more mature Jack. Everyone who grew up with the show is now an adult, and it's great that the show has matured with us. In case you have never had the privilege of experiencing this masterwork, or if you're like me and just need a refresher before the new series, everyone's favorite samurai is available on the Hulus. And though there isn't a proper ending, I think there is one episode you should save for last. Season 3, Episode 6. I don't know much about the upcoming season, but I have a feeling this episode works as a perfect segue. You have until March 11th to get that done. And who knows, maybe there'll be another video on that epic conclusion. Until next time, see you space cowboy. Wait, shit, wrong show. What we do here is go back, 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 back.